Sanchi, the stupa village, is situated 45 kilometers away from Bhopal. When it was discovered in 1818 by General Taylor, Sanchi had lain abandoned for 600 years and the site was overrun with vegetation. Excavations began in somewhat disorganized fashion until the Archaeological Survey of India stepped in and took control. The Great Stupa, as it stands today, consists of an almost hemispherical dome, truncated near the top and crowned by a triple umbrella set at the center of a heavy masonry pedestal within a square railing. Each gateway consists of two square pillars crowned by a set of four lions, elephants or pot-bellied dwarfs, supporting a superstructure of curvy form architraves with spirally rolled ends. The overall height, excluding crowning elements, being 8.53 meters. The entire surface of the gateways is covered with bas reliefs representing scenes and decorations. In spite of a disparity in the standard of workmanship and treatment due to the varying ability of sculptors, the carvings are definitely more developed and mature in conception, technique and composition. The artist had by now passed the archaic stage and handled stone with greater ease. The figures no longer suffer from the rigid frontal pose, nor do they seem to be the outcome of pure memory picture. They're supple and natural to some extent and are shown in diverse postures. Their movement somewhat free and unconstrained. The massive ground balustrade is divided into four quadrants by entrances formed by L-shaped projections of the railing near the cardinal directions. The reproduction of the technique of wood constructions in these balustrades shows that stone as a building material was new to the builders. The last accretion to the stupa took place after nearly five centuries, when during the rule of the Guptas, four images of Buddha, each seated under a pillared canopy, were installed against the walls of the stupa, facing its four entrances. The present stupa encases an earlier one of about half its present dimension. The latter, built of large burnt bricks and mud mortar, has justifiably been attributed to Asoka, the main reasons being that the levels of its floors and of the inscribed pillar of the emperor are the same, and that the bricks used in it resemble in shape, fabric and size those in other Asakan structures. The gateways, together with the balustrade, were painted. This is evident from the traces of red paint still sticking to the east gateway and the balustrade flanking it. The subject matter of the carvings on the gateways may be broadly classified as scenes from the history of Buddhism and the life of Buddha. Buddhist art in sculptures can be marked with special features and distinct characters of its own. When King Ashoka adopted the Buddhist philosophy, he immediately followed a mission to spread the teachings of this faith in all possible directions. This resulted in the creation of many stupas or dome-shaped monuments along with a polished stone pillar midway through the 3rd century BC. The stupas contained a central chamber in which the relics of the Buddha were placed. These constructions, which served as edicts, can be easily noticed in Buddhist monuments, created in many places in India. The West Gateway depicts the seven incarnations of the Buddha, four represented by trees and three by stupas. The structure of Stupa III belongs to the period between 150 to 140 BC and is situated northeast of the Great Stupa, where the relics of Sariputra and Mahamagolana, the two famous disciples of the Buddha, were found in its innermost chamber. It has only one gateway. Having remained a principal center of Buddhism in medieval India, Following the spread of Hinduism, Sanchi bears unique witness as a major Buddhist sanctuary to the period from the 3rd century BC to the 1st century AD. Stupa II dates back to the 2nd century BC 
and stands at the very edge of the hill, and its most striking feature is the stone balustrade that surrounds it. The balustrades consist of a series of octagonal oblongs, in the case of the Harmika balustrade, upright with lenticular crossbars, mortised into them and crowned by enormous copings, rounded at the top. The outer faces of the uprights of the berm and stairway balustrades are carved with one complete medallion at the centre and two half medallions at the ends. These medallions contain a variety of motifs, mostly flowers and animals, the latter often drawn realistically and rarely plant compositions, human figures, mythological beings like centaurs and birds. The architecture can be seen clearly in the monuments like stupas, monolithic Ashokan pillars, temples, monasteries and sculptural wealth. The Sanshi goes up in shelves, with stupa 2 situated on a lower shelf, stupas 1 and 3, the 5th century Gupta temple and the 7th century temple are on the intermediate shelf, and a later monastery is on the crowning shelf. Many other structures are found on the site, within the ruins of a wall dating from the 11th to 12th centuries. Sanchi's final years are monolithic pillars, palaces, temples and monasteries, all in varying states of preservation. Stupa 5 to the south of Stupa 3 is remarkable in its having an image of Buddha in the Daina Mudra on a moulded pedestal built against its southern side. Temple 31 is a flat-roofed pillared shrine, oblong in plan and standing on a high platform, ascended by a flight of steps facing south. It contains an image of Buddha having an elaborately carved round halo and seated on a double-petaled lotus. The monastery and the temple on the crowning shelf illustrate the evolution of the architectural form after the 5th century Gupta temple. The monastery complex 47 is constituted by a group of the latest buildings on the site, which aren't earlier than the 11th century AD. The larger court, 47, has on its southern side a pillared veranda, with a small cell and a long room behind it. On its western side, there's a covered colonnade, and on its northern one, a pillared veranda leading to an antechamber. A shrine on the western end and at the back a corridor and five cells make up this complex. The ruins of this towering temple and the attached monastery, which can be seen at the eastern extremity of the eastern area, belong to two periods. Of the earlier complex, which dates from the 7th or 8th century AD, small sections of the platform, the cells on the north, south and west sides and the pavement of the courtyard are visible as well as the plinth of three small stupas, the curb at the edge of the pillared veranda and a solitary pillar. The eastern cells and the remnant of the shrine are buried under the later superimposition, however. The veranda, somewhat higher than the courtyard, is edged by a stone composed of alternating oblong and square blocks, the latter containing mortise holes for pillars.
In the sanctum is enshrined an image of Buddha on a double-petaled lotus, inscribed with the Buddhist creed in characters of about the 10th century AD, with a lion throne below. The elongated oval halo is richly decorated. The monastery is designed on the stereotyped plan usual for such buildings. An open courtyard at the centre, with an enclosing veranda and a range of cells behind. The masonry has a facing of hammer-dressed stones and a core of rubble and stone chips. An interesting feature is that the stone walls are extensively veneered with flat bricks. Built on a high rectangular stone platform and provided with two stepped approaches on its eastern and western sides, the original structure of this other temple, probably of timber, was an apsidal hall. As the stone foundation of the hall, with indications of an apsidal circumambulatory passage, was noticed in the core of the platform. The conservation and restoration of works of art is an important activity in any country which has a rich heritage. This is true in the case of India, whose history is written by prehistoric man. Conservators and restorers in India are facing the challenge of conserving material. In response to such a challenge, Efforts have been made since 1905 to preserve and conserve the heritage by active government support and the involvement of the enlightened public by way of framing laws, setting up regulatory authorities, funding, setting up institutions to study, teach and conduct research. This 7th century Apsidal Temple stands on a raised platform immediately facing the south gateway of Stupa 1. This temple, consisting of a flat-roofed square sanctum with a portico supported on four pillars in the front, is a remarkable piece of Gupta architecture. Sanchi is the oldest extant Buddhist sanctuary. Although Buddha never visited the site during any of his former lives, nor during his earthly existence, the religious nature of the shrine is obvious. The stupas of Sanchi represent the most accomplished form of this type of monument. The stupa is the most characteristic monument of Buddhist India.